calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. So, I'm here today. We're going to be interviewing Antoine, our lovely friend, Antoine, one of our co-hosts of the Blurred Mom podcast. If you guys remember last year, Antoine helped us conduct interviews for me, Brian, and Ralph. And this time, we have Antoine in the hot seat. So we're going to be asking him a couple questions, getting to know him a little better for our three month, three month, three year oh, anniversary. My intern still. <laughs> for our three year anniversary coming up. So just um, before we get into the questions, how you doing today, Antoine? I'm doing pretty good. It's a Saturday. It's just chilling. Not too much going on right now. So, yeah. Are you ready for these interview questions? I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready, steady. We gonna we gonna we gonna find out if you ready for real. Don't come with <laughs> my shit playing. <laughs> <laughs> we, gonna, <laughs> we gonna start with the first question. So you've been a member of the mob for almost a year and a couple months now, but the world must know what made you join the Blurred Mob podcast. Uh I say what made me join. It's kind of just the friends in general. Um, the people on the Blur, um, Blur my podcast. We've been friends for a long time, and we always get around each other and just talk crap, uh, shoot the shit, as one would say. And so, when you guys brought the idea of a podcast to me, I was like, "Why not? I mean, we do this anyway. Might as well record it and let other people hear it." Yeah. So, Have you been enjoying your time? I've been enjoying my time. I like talking to y'all sometimes. Not sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Not sometimes. That's what I'm going to God damn, again? We got to talk again? <laughs> Recording again. <laughs> Recording again? No, I enjoy I enjoy this all the time. I like talking to you guys. Um, the conversations, the topics that we always bring up, they're always pretty interesting to me. So, With that, what would you say your favorite segment of the podcast? Um, I would say... I I have to choose the mod reviews, and I say that because I feel like that's kind of like the heart of why we started. Well, I would say from my point of view, at least, because like kind of like what I was just saying is we used to always sit around and whenever somebody watched a new TV series, new anime, played a new game or something, we'd always come together and kind of talk about it anyway. So, I mean, the blur the mod reviews are kind of just just that really it's us somebody what we all watch something similar and we just want to uh, get each other's like thoughts about it you know it's like our book club yeah book club <laughs> movie club <laughs> anime club yeah i like it because you know we always we talk about or we do a lot of different mob reviews like as as you've seen we've like expanded into video games music anime movies tv shows and things like that mm. So I definitely yeah. agree that it's like when you were able to, you know, put our thoughts into all of these different things, it's not just one area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, variety is what we like. But I, f- I feel like that tracks for you because you tend to you tend to watch a lot of stuff. You watch like a lot of different TV shows, anime, and sometimes it's just on a whim. And then sometimes when we bring up things like you'll come in. Yeah, I'm watching that too. It's like, that's what you watching that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you watch a lot of stuff that we don't expect you to watch yeah it, it's it's different for me i mean i think a lot of times with you and um, king might see is i'll just click on something random because a lot of times i just like background noise or it might be something that i've seen some people talking about on like social media or somebody might have recommended something to me mm-hmm. and i'm like I don't really feel like sitting down, putting my full attention to this, but I'm going to put it on anyway in the background and I might be scrolling on my phone or whatever. But if it's like catching my attention, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I look forward to. I, I look forward to whatever I put on the TV to just catch my attention and everything doesn't do that. It's a lot of things that won't do that actually. But a, a, a lot of times I do find some good ones. You, you'll you find the um the gemstones or whatever, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, this, this is actually kind of good, you know, so... So what qualities, because you watch so many random things or you get so many recommendations from like people that you talk to or social media, like even though you watch for bre- background noise, what qualities or what's your criteria when it's like, okay, I need to lock in? Mm-hmm. I this think might it's different. Be something. 
it's it's different for me. So like if it's like an anime or something, it's, it's like there are types of animes that I I'll usually lean towards. If it's like an anime, kind of like um, it's like an everyday story, you know, something that you can get from like a live action TV, regular TV show or something like that. I'm not saying that those are not interesting, but most of the times those won't grab my attention as much as something that really just um goes above and beyond. So like something like Attack on Titan, that's not something you're gonna see in a live action show for real. Mm-hmm. So um and like things like um One Piece, um My Hero, you got people that have abilities, not unnatural abilities and stuff like that. And I look that I like I think that's kind of like the main thing I look forward to, but also the story has to be engaging. Um, it mm-hmm. really has to get me the characters, I'll say most definitely, because you have so many different like types of animes and stuff like this. Everybody has something similar. But if if it's all really cliche, then I'll say that probably won't grab my attention as much as something that's kind of like just just a bit different than what you see on the usual. And, and it's kind of the same with live action shows. Um, I think more so for those, it kind of just depends on the story. Like, are you telling a good story? Like, what are we here? What are we what are we doing here? You know? So the initial interest has to be there. It already it, from initially it has to be some stuff you already vibe with, and then on top of that, you just got to be like, you gotta show me something that's taking it over the top. You just can't do the same thing that everybody been doing because mm-hmm. I didn't already seen that. Yeah, yeah, the cliche stuff gets real boring, and I and I might let it still play honestly if I'm like just really not paying attention to my TV because I I really do like just background noise. I might just let it play, and I might. Not, well, after I'm done with the background noise, I might cut it off and not revisit it ever again. But sometimes it might you might get some screen time from me though. He <laughs> said so you might get some screen time. Oh man. I guess that explains why why sometimes you'd be like, Yeah, I watch that. I don't remember a lot of it, but I, I, I remember I remember seeing yeah. this guy. I feel like I watched this before. What do you mean you feel like you watched this before? Like, yeah, that character seems familiar to me. For real. That happens a lot. Like the uh show that King was watching that anime uh, with Steria, I want to say. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I had that on the TV one time. Y'all was in the room with me. I was like, yeah, that was playing. I might I might have to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, maybe, I, I, maybe, I, like maybe that. I might spin the block. Y'all watching it? I might have to spin the block. That's yeah, how it gets yeah. us. That's how it mm-hmm. gets us with the mob reviews. Oh, y'all was watching that, too? I might have to spin oh, the yeah. block. <laughs> and I love that part, too. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I clicked on that, and you said... You watched you watched it and it was actually good. I was like, okay, okay, cool. Like, it was a good it was a good pick. Then maybe I'll, I'll go back to it. You know, see what they was really talking about because I wasn't doing it the first time, obviously. Okay, okay, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but sticking to your anime bag because you do you tend to watch a lot of anim- anime like when it comes to like the random stuff that you be watching. But we know, or at least I know, and everybody will find out that your bread and butter. It's the Dragon Ball Z. And you're a big fan. We didn't caught you watching the DVDs. You got the <laughs> fucko pops. But the thing with Dragon Ball Z that I find so interesting and I want to ask you is that you all we always have those debates of somebody against Goku. Mm-hmm. Superman versus Goku. I think when the boys came out, they started doing like Homelander versus Goku, Omni Man versus Goku. Mm-hmm. As a Dragon Ball Z fan. Why do you feel like everybody pits their favorite? Like when a new strong character comes out and it takes on to be everybody's favorite, why do you feel like they put them against Goku? I feel like it's because there's a threshold that we're all so used to. Because Dragon Ball Z is like, it was one of the bigger animes um, for America for a long time. Like, you know, when we, when we were growing up before mm-hmm. people, we as Westerners knew a lot about anime. It was just Dragon Ball Z. This was our... This was this was the anime, and um, and they had a threshold that was so high. You know, they out here destroying planets with one finger and stuff like that. So I think when these newer shows come out and they got these strong characters, everybody's like, "Well, how strong is he really? Is he stronger, or he or she stronger than this OG anime that we're so used to? The Goku, you know, these people out mm-hmm. here doing these big things, these big key blasts. Like you're saying, your favorite character is this strong, but has he even crossed the Goku?" Strength level, and you know. Goku, Goku <laughs> level. Have like, you passed you, the if, Goku test? If you have, yeah. If, if you haven't passed this test, you might want to pipe down because because <laughs> your character ain't that strong. What is he? What is he really doing for you to be mm-hmm. boasting that your character is like, oh, he, my character, my favorite, oh, my favorite character is better than everybody. The strongest, she the strongest, all this type of stuff. How strong is 
your character for real. It's time to take the Goku <laughs> test. It's time to take the Goku test. So, so you I, feel I, like people use it for power scaling? I think so. I, yeah. Um, the Goku versus Superman has gone, been going on for so long. It's it's. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just let it be. I like to see the fights, like uh, the death battle that we watch. I like to see the yeah. fights, and I'm not mad at who wins or loses. Uh, it's it is what it is, but. I, it's still interesting to I think it's amazing to see that people still do that test mm-hmm. uh, the Goku test like it's go Dragon Ball Z is really old the original Dragon Ball Z well not even Dragon Ball but I'm gonna say Dragon Ball Z because that's what most people watch or know about Dragon Ball Z I think it's still interesting that people put their faves against Goku I know they got Dragon Ball Super and they so they it's kind of newer and Goku has the newer transformation or whatever so mm-hmm is that he's still getting stronger. So now it's even more for people to compare. Now you got to gotta like, do more. The Goku you, test is increasing. This is the 2024 <laughs> Goku test. We have yeah, added new requirements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's no longer just the um super, the base Super Saiyan. It's like, okay, he even got, he even got way stronger than what he was back in Super Saiyan, mm-hmm. Goku versus Frieza. It's okay. Is he stronger than Ultra Instinct Goku? And it's, I don't know. The power skills are so weird, and I, and to me, it's like I feel like Goku is so OP. Like it's hard to beat him. Like, mm-hmm. but people still people still do it, and I, I it's interesting to me. It's, How do you feel about the theory that people say Sailor Moon can beat Goku? So you know Sailor Moon, my girl. <laughs> <laughs> they say she can whoop his ass. How do you so, feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I I've watched Sailor Moon with you. I I've I've watched Sailor Moon with you, and I've seen some of Sailor Moon's abilities, and um, I've seen her go against um the Galact I forget her name the uh, the most Galactica. powerful yeah Galactica. I've seen her go against her, and she looks she looks pretty strong. I'm not sure like I've seen her strength against against the person um who apparently has the ability to destroy planets as well. Mm-hmm. Galactica could do that, so. If Sailor Moon has the ability to beat a person who's destroying planets, then I would say that's a fair that's fair to say that she's up there or above Goku because we don't see Goku destroying planets, but we know he has that ability to. He has the strength to do so. But of course he's mm-hmm. a good guy, so he's not out here just up to blow up your planet. So right. we've seen Sailor Moon and Goku going against people who are able to destroy planets. So they're they're both up there. As far as saying she can whoop his ass, she might have <laughs> I'm going to say, because I'm a Goku fan, I, so I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to say she might have the power. Like, she's going to have a blast or something. But when it comes to the combat, Goku might get her. Yeah, she he can't touch my girl. He, he put my hand, he put his hands on Usagi. Usagi's done. <laughs> <laughs> so if he get close enough to her, I'm going to say he got it. But if she... She do something. She don't let him get close. She, she yeah. got it. She got it. She got it. it well, you it. heard it. You heard it here first on the Blur Mob <laughs> podcast that Sailor Moon and Goku are equal, and the boys got to pass the Goku test, and the girls got to pass the Sailor Moon test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's fair. I like that. <laughs> what if I said you're my favorite character, Antoine? Would you fight Goku? <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that's what. I don't, I don't got to put myself against that test. You know how... Would you, would you take the Goku test? <laughs> you know how people ain't out here putting Midoriya against Goku? It's reasons. They did what? <laughs> it's, it's reasons. It's reasons. You might have a fair, favorite character, but you're not even entering them into that tournament. You go, I'm going to keep my favorite character over here where it's safe. Where, <laughs> like you, let them, you, let, you let them people over there fight. To the death, but I'm gonna keep Girl, my favorite character. Get behind me. So get behind me. Get behind me. Get behind me. Because they over there fighting. We don't need to be a part of that. You just, um, you a good character. That's it. <laughs> um, I do want to step away for the anime from a minute because, along with the anime, you also get into your video game bag a little bit, a little bit. And we know mm. you're a big Legend of Zelda fan. So mm-hmm. I want to know what's the best so far, because you know Nintendo's going to make more games, but so mm-hmm. far, what is the best Legend of Zelda game you've played so far? So I want to give two answers, but I, I can only give one. I have to say the newest one, um, the Tears of the Kingdom, is the best. Now, if I went off just solely like nostalgia, I'd have to say the GameCube games that I was playing, um, like Wind Waker, stuff like that, because those were the games that really 
brought me into loving the Zelda franchise. I those are the games; those are the original games. I love them. I was so young and I couldn't beat them, but I, and but I still love the game. I, I to this day have never beat that game, so I just watched it on YouTube, see other people beat it, and I lived through them. But I did fall in love with those games. But to say that Tears of King, Tears of the Kingdom isn't the best would be probably frowned upon because it's a beautiful game. It, it, it's beautiful. You saw me. You saw me playing that game. Mm-hmm. I did everything but the main story. It took Let's me months to save that Zelda. <laughs> it took me months to go out there and save Zelda. I damn near forgot to go save her because I was doing other stuff. I was I was mm-hmm. engaged in the world doing other missions and stuff like that because it was so engaging and I loved it. Um, that I forgot about the main story for real. I mean, I was kind of like kind of still doing it, but I was like, all right, I'm gonna come back to you. This main story ain't going nowhere. I got other stuff I need to take care of. Mm-hmm. So. The game, it's a beautiful game. Uh, the world that they, they've created, the story that they've created, it's, it's beautiful, and I, I love it. Okay, so if Tears of the Kingdom is number one, what would you mm-hmm. say is the worst Legend of Zelda game you've ever played? Ooh, um, uh, I, I don't know for sure, because um, I, have, I can't say that I've played all of them. I definitely haven't. Um, but the ones that I have played, I've enjoyed, uh, and that's probably just starting from GameCube. Um, mm-hmm. So I, it's a hard question. I, hmm. I even used to play the old ones, like the two D ones, where it's not even like an open world. It's like you, I don't know if you remember, like the two D ones. It's like um, just like a board, and he kind of just moving along the board oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I've even played those. So I, I guess I, if I have to say, um, if I have to choose something, it'll have to be probably one of those. I don't even remember the names of them, but. It'll probably have to be one of those, not even just because it was boring. Because I, I used to get up in there and play them sometimes, but it's but it was it wasn't a lot to it, I guess. It's not it as was open compared, world as yeah, Tears if, of the Kingdom. Yeah, if we're comparing it to the other stuff that the other stuff that I played with the open world and stuff, I guess I have to say that those would be the worst. Okay. Is it just because they're not like open world that you would say they're the worst? Because no. you, you said you enjoyed them anyway. So not technically calling For, it the worst the worst so, but it's just for what not it was as back then yeah okay. because i mean back then it's not like we had the technology we we have now so back then i didn't just like play this game it's like oh i hate this game it was like it's okay this is a game this is like it's it's something to play i didn't just like i hate it but it also wasn't something i just was in love with you know so i'd have to rank it low okay so if they went back to that. If the next Legend of Zelda game after this one that's about to come out, and it's not like Tears of the Kingdom, or whatever you would say, oh man, Nintendo, what's going on? Or what? Yeah. What would make you say, Nintendo, what the hell is this with a Legend of Zelda game? So you know that one that they for the drop right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have. You don't like her stacking them beds? What I mean. <laughs> What is that junk called? Hold I on. forgot what that game is called, but um, we gonna I, find out. I hope, and and I might buy it just to buy it because I'm a Legend of Zelda. Um, Echoes I'm of Wisdom. Legend. You don't want to okay, play? Okay, yeah, that. Echoes of Wisdom. I'm, I might, I might play it because I like Legend of Zelda, but I don't think it's gonna be my favorite. It's 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 a puzzle game. It looks like it's gonna mm-hmm. be more focused on puzzles, which is kind of like I'll say maybe um the, some of the older um Zelda games were like, but this one is more. 3D open world a bit, um, as I can see. I don't know if it's like completely open world. I, it's I don't 2D. Remember, but, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's more of the 2D type. So it might not be, I don't know. It might not be the worst thing in the world, but when I saw it, I wasn't like, ooh, I want to go buy that. It wasn't what you I, were expecting when they yeah. announced the new Legend of Zelda game, giving yeah. Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but I'm also, I'm also not mad at it because they did just drop something like Tears of the Kingdom. So the fact that they can also drop these other side games that's different, you know, and and it, that might get other people. That might that might be the it for some other people. Like they they might see that and be like, oh, I want to go play that because I love the old two D type style games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I want to go buy that game. So I I do I do like the fact that they have some variety, kind of like Mario. Mario mm-hmm. is not just one type of game that they have. It's like they, it's different types of Mario games that you can play, different types of things you can do. Um, so I'm not mad at it. It's just I wasn't. It, like expecting them to put that out yeah so yeah. so when you play it would you do a mob review even even if it's not like your number one like even if it doesn't stand up to tears of the kingdom would you do a mob review on it if like yeah. if you absolutely hated it 
Yeah, I do. My, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fun. it's gonna be so funny, but yeah, I I would do it. Yeah. Okay, okay, we we gonna be waiting. We gonna be waiting. Bet. But yeah, you you really just you know you you stretch your stuff with the Legend of Zelda stuff. Yeah, mm. I love it. I'm so just when, the aesthetic, the games, all that, y'all. <laughs> so when would you say, Antoine, that you realize that you were a nerd because you just nerded out over Legend of Zelda <laughs> and Dragon Ball? Yeah. Uh. I would say a long time ago, growing up, um, maybe like middle school type years, middle school years, I wasn't, I wasn't the guy who was just really interested in like, oh, I'm going to go outside and play basketball or anything like that. It was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to sit in the, house, the summer coming, I'm going to sit in this house. We, we got this, I got this new game or this mm-hmm. new series or something, this new anime or something just came out. Back then it was a little harder to watch anime, but if something just came out, I want to sit in the house and I want to play a game. That's how I was interested in. Um, and I think at that point, I kind of just knew. I also wasn't very athletic, though people would look at me and think that I was. I wasn't. I was, That's crazy. I, say, <laughs> I would say if I was to play any sport, if I really put my mind to it when I was growing up, it would have been football, most definitely. Um, I did have interest in football, but I just kind of, I think the nerd side of me took over way mm-hmm. harder than the um, like the athletic side of me. I just... They pulled, they was, they was fine for a little second and then I got pulled in one direction. And then he was so, like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go this yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go over here and see what they talk about on this <laughs> So, it, yeah. it was like, it was like a, the, a symbiote. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it took over real hard and it ain't let go yet. So, because I'm still not out here like, well, I'm going to go play football. I might play. I just might, be, I just might not be the best person. I would, I would love to see you play. Leave in the comments if you want to see Antoine play football, because I would love to see Antoine play football. I, uh, I played when I was deployed. We played like uh, touch football. I mean, I looked good when I was running out there. I just didn't know plays and stuff like that. So, uh-huh. I might look good doing. He was like, "What we doing? You just run." They answer, "Just run, <laughs> just run." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what I did. I just ran. I, if y'all throw the football to me, I'm trying to catch it, whatever. But I'm going to just get out here. I'm going to just run. I'm, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> but it's it's funny that you brought up, like, your physique. Because, physique. like, when somebody does look at you, they'll be like, oh, Antoine must be extremely athletic. Like, he must play football. He play basketball. But no, yeah. he be yeah. in the house playing the game. And I just be looking like, uh. But one thing. Be- Everybody be like, ooh, I bet you can run. You finna run like a when we do our PT test and stuff with the army, they be like, Oh, I bet you finna do like a 12, 13 minute run. And I just be like, uh, uh, <laughs> Y'all ain't got I'm no like, games. <laughs> Y'all ain't got no Wii Fit. Y'all ain't got no Wii Fit. <laughs> I can press the A button real fast and I can <laughs> let me let me show you what this can do. <laughs> yeah, but I think joining the military is what I don't know. That's it got me in shape. So I, I, I'm in shape, but I'm still not athletic. He still don't play no ball. Don't. Uh, I play volleyball. Don't. I play volleyball. I, volleyball is fun. Or like the pool volleyball. You remember we used to yeah. back at your old place. So that, yeah. that was fun times. But yeah. one thing we do know you use your body for, Antoine, is some pictures. <laughs> you be getting, you be getting them angles. You make, you make sure that y'all see this. Y'all see this? I don't play football, but y'all see this? And you be having the angles. It's the angles, the lighting. So, like, with every, like, when you take pictures, I just, walk me through how Antoine gets the perfect picture. So, for me, uh, I don't, um, it's a couple things that go into it. Uh, the lighting, obviously, how I'm feeling on one random particular day. Like, I'll, if I just went out and got a haircut, and I'm like really feeling it. You know how I like to go out to their parking garage mm-hmm. and stuff and just snap pictures. But for me, it's like I'm not just going to go out at like a random time. I think I think the yeah, the sun plays a huge part in like when I'm going to go out and take pictures. It's like certain times of the day when you can really get like the best lighting, I'd say. Like it's I've broken it down kind of like <laughs> I would say in the morning time for me, if it's going to be right, maybe between like 8 to 10, maybe pushing 11 and then Nothing at noon because the sun gonna be on top of me. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be creating shadows on my face and all like that. And then <laughs> maybe like two to four because the sun gonna be. We are gonna be getting that indirect sunlight again. Mm-hmm. It's not. 
And so it, it creates like a, a bright picture when you get the indirect sunlight. Like you can push it a little closer to when the sun is like first rising and when the sun is first setting because we got that melanated skin. So you're going to get that direct sunlight to make you really glow and all of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can get good pictures at that time too. So I don't know. For me, I, I be thinking about all of that when I'm getting ready to take a picture because you can take a good picture, but you can also take a great picture. <laughs> And I and I also I really just like taking pictures. It's not even just of me. I just I think in another lifetime I would have been like a photographer or something because I just I like taking pictures. I like taking pictures of other people, mm-hmm. um, scenery sometimes. But it's, I think I just I like taking pictures of people. But to uh, kind of like fulfill that, I take a lot of pictures of myself. And also because my mom just loved pictures growing up, so mm-hmm. I like pictures. You know, I, I really like to capture myself over time. You know, like what are the changes? Like what's the growth? What are we looking like? How are we feeling? So what about the poses? Because you know you you have some some unique poses. The given given the situation, so wait, so so walk me behind the poses. Like is is it also if it's eleven a.m. I got to pose like this? <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't think I'm good at poses. I I wish I was better. Um, I think it's people out here that are way better at just naturally posing than I am. I I, I if you put a if somebody else is taking a picture of of me. I start to get like real weird. Like I don't know how to pose. How should I you pose? Just... Yeah, and yeah. I think if I'm ta- if I'm taking the pictures of myself, I can take my time and do what I want. Take as many pictures as I want. Like I don't like that pose. I don't like that. But when other when other people are taking pictures of me, I don't just naturally have good poses to go to. I'd be like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to pose. So are you <laughs> so, off guard? So you like off guards more? You I just, do. You know, I do appreciate off guards. Um, Pictures, yeah, I do appreciate off guards, especially when they're from other people. Um, I don't know why they they always seem to look good to me, but they they do. So you don't have like three default poses because I, I feel like I probably do. I I if like if you put a camera in front of me, I'm probably gonna hit a, a pose that I've done so many times before. But it's Your it's not even yeah, and, and it's not even like oh okay, I know I'm gonna hit this pose. It's kind of just like I don't got nothing else to do, so I just do it. So. Okay. So. <laughs> So really, the big thing is that it's got to be the right time of day. As long as it's the right time of day, the poses, mm-hmm. the vibe, and everything yeah. else is going to come with it. But oh, it yeah. has to be between 8 and 10, not <laughs> noon, and 2 and 4. <laughs> yeah. I think if we're going to be outside taking pictures, we got to, this has got to be certain times. Especially when I'm taking pictures with other people and it's like, I don't want to be doing too much. It's but like, mm-hmm. it's like, all right, y'all, let's face the sun. Now we, we can't be not, we can't be. The sun can't be behind us because now I'm looking real, real dark and we can't even see nothing on me. So, y'all, let's let's flip it. I know we're trying to get this scenery back here, but let's let's capture one of the scenery and then let's turn this around and let's capture one of us. Let's capture- <laughs> and everybody use this. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say your favorite place is to take pictures at? Or like what's or what's like your favorite scenery that was like, oh, this would be a great place to take a picture? Um, If I had to just think about um the trips i've taken uh hmm uh that's a good question i, I like, would say um like my favorite place to go to take pictures or like or like when you go somewhere what about when you take a picture what about the scenery just calls oh. you and be like hey you need to take a picture or i need to take a picture in front of this Oh, this, oh, this, okay, yeah. I mean, it, it especially it, I kind of it kind of just depends on where I go. Like, um, if it's something that's kind of breathtaking, I'll say like I love mm-hmm. um I love nature a lot. Um, like when you see like hills, mountains, and stuff like that, I, I just love that. Love seeing like that that type of stuff. So I like to get pictures in front of all of that. Or if it's just some type of um something, if you like, if I go to a different state or city, country, whatever, and they just got this symbol or something or something that everybody kind of just knows of. Um, mm-hmm. Then I'll take a picture in front of that because like, hey, everybody's going to know what this is because we this is like what this place is kind of popular for. This is what the people go here for. So take a picture of that. But I also just like the natural things. But, um, as long as it's like a clean background, I guess, um, I always want to take a picture in front of it. Okay. I feel like because if nothing's in the background, everybody can just focus on you. Ooh, look at Antoine. Ooh. Now, I have my times like that, yeah. Uh, but I, I do have to remind myself, though, sometimes, like, capture what you out here. Like, if mm-hmm. I'm going on a trip, like, let's not forget to capture other things, like, so people can actually see. Because people be out telling me, like, we want to see the pictures and stuff like that. So I'd be like, okay, let's 
Let's take pictures of other things. But uh, <laughs> y'all don't want to see me. He be disappointed. Y'all don't want to see me. This, for me, real. this y'all didn't want to see that one. Y'all no, didn't want to okay. see that. Y'all just want to see the building. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. So, but I'm always. But you know, I'm always gonna take a picture. I, I'm gonna have to have that good one picture of myself too. But yeah, we want to get some scenery. I'll get some scenery up in there. There's some scenery in there. Get some scenery <laughs> in there. <laughs> You mentioned your trips and um, you travel or you've been traveling a lot, like going to different countries and stuff. What countries um, are on your bucket list to travel to or what countries have you been to that were on your bucket list that you got a chance to go to? Um, I would say two that I want to go to now. And I just kind of, well, one has always been on the list, Japan. Um, I've always wanted to go to Japan. I still want to go to Japan. I haven't had that opportunity to do so. I, I've had, and I now have this new interest in wanting to visit Singapore. I don't know why, but I kind of just want to go. Especially, you know, we'd be on playing Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. And we'd be all going at the Sino- them, uh, them Singapore. City, them city, yeah, yeah. 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 And I was looking up stuff online and I was like, oh, this is like a nice place to go. So I want to go there. Um, other than that, as far as bucket list uh, that I've been to, I would say London, um, uh, Paris. Um, okay. those are kind of the bucket list other than that it's really just been like islands and those are cool those are nice to go to but um, they were I can't say that they were just on my bucket list to go to so what makes a city bucket list ready what what about a city that makes you say oh I gotta put this on my bucket list I think uh, I the things to do um, it can't be some like can't be a trashy city uh, or country or whatever. Uh, you got to have a lot of things to do, things that I'm interested in. So I'll, I'll use Japan as an example. Of course, I'm a big anime fan. So like, obviously, all that type of stuff. They got Nintendo World out there. I want to see all of that. I want to mm-hmm. see some of the locations and places that I've seen in these different animes. I want to eat the food because I love ramen and they eat a lot of ramen and stuff like that. I, I think the culture, the people, the activities, um, and I scenery is also a big one for me um uh, it doesn't have to have the best scenery because i don't know if japan as far as like nature scenery um that's a big one because i do like hiking and stuff like that but um mm-hmm. i i'll say that it doesn't have to have that if the things that are within the city like the activities and stuff can make up for it so so it's it's gotta be it's gotta have stuff that you know you're inter- like those once in a lifetime experience yeah. things that mm-hmm. you always want to see yeah, food you can go is here. A, yeah, sounds like food is a big thing. Mm-hmm. So what like, is it about? I, what is it about the islands that like these are cool, but like they're not bucket list ready? I mean, because on the islands, you really go to an island because beach and party time. Because this, you know, that's where people like to go. Everybody mm-hmm. likes to be on the. Everybody likes to be on the island. Um, it's really just the beaches and um the party type stuff that you can do. Like they're going to probably have good nightlife. The weather is going to be great too. But mm-hmm. um, it, but it's, it's just so many islands, I guess in the world, there's so many places where you can go to get that, that beach vibe. We can go to Miami and get a beach vibe, honestly. Oh. Um, So it's not like a bucket list, but it's, it's nice to see them though, to go there, I guess. Is it like after you've been to so many islands, it's kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. Now what's it's the, an island. The, yeah, that was an island. What's the um, what's the difference between this one and the other one? I mean, like honestly, because the different places that I've gone to, honestly, the the beaches are the beaches are gonna be nice. But at this point, it's really just how nice is the hotel? Because I've seen the beach a thousand times now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, of course I'm not I'm not over it. I still love going to the beach, different beaches, to love seeing the um the clear waters and all that stuff. I'm not I don't have anything against it, but it's it's not just something. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's, I still like to go, but it's not just like, well, yeah, the, I gotta the beach do that. Is fun. I, gotta, I get it. Like after you've been to like a place a certain amount of times, or you've been like, once you've been to all of these islands and you, you know, you understand that it's all kind of sort of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, okay, yeah. don't mind the island, but I, mm-hmm. but I know what to expect versus I like, know what to expect. versus how like Japan, like you have all these different things. Like, even though you've mm-hmm. seen them, like, you know, there's there, you know, like once you get there, this experience will be different from that experience that will be different yeah. from that experience. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly that, honestly. And I think Singapore would be cool, too. I like how you brought up, like, with Mario Kart, when them adding the tour tracks to the game, is that we get a little sneak peek of, like, what these cities look like and, like, 
the way that they do like the colors and stuff like mm-hmm. i think it is a single board track where it's like at nighttime and the way that mm-hmm. they have everything like lit up and stuff like mm-hmm. that's yeah. dope. that that makes you want to go yeah. to some of these cities yeah, I'd say like the different architectures too, like the way their their buildings are constructed, just the way that they look. Um, mm-hmm. I got when I was deployed and I was out in um Doha, Qatar. It even though it's hot as hell there, and I don't think I just want to go visit there just because, right? But just like seeing the architecture, the buildings and stuff like that, it's just it's different than what you see in America in most places. So I think just seeing that also is just cool. Okay, so if you could go back in time and talk to your 18 year old self. Cause I feel like just knowing you personally, you've done a lot of different things. You've jumped into a, like a lot of different avenues since uh, we first met at JSU. And if you could go back in the past and talk to your 18 year old self and tell him one thing out of all the things that you've done since then, if you can tell him one thing that you've done in the future, what one thing would you tell him? One thing that I've done in the future. Mm. Um, I would say, it, hmm, I would say, I would tell them about the traveling that I've done. I, I would say that because I think that's, that was pretty big. So I tell them about the traveling. Um, and I know when I was turning 18, I was getting ready to ship out to basic training. So I'd also tell them it's, it, you're making a good choice. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I know it probably sucks, but it's, it's, it's worth it, I guess, in the future. Mm-hmm. for what you're doing right now so and then you'll tell yeah. them we've been to this country this country this country yeah, this yeah, country yeah. I was like, yeah i know it's suck right now they finna get ready to cut your hair off but you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went to london <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah I, i'd be like yeah don't worry the hair gonna go back <laughs> so you'll be all right so okay stick to it was traveling like was it, has that always been your aspiration then like even when you were younger to like travel to like multiple countries yeah, I I think it's kind of like in the back of my head type of thing that I was it was always it was always there. Um, didn't know how how would go about it, but it was always there because I just like seeing different things and going to different places. So, so you think like you would you would warm your eighteen year old self heart when you're just like, oh, we actually did get to go like out the country and go to these islands and go to mm-hmm. London and Paris and do all these things, and then have future aspirations to go to mm-hmm. these other countries. Yeah. Yeah. I would also tell them that you will get the chance to jump out of a plane. So You must wanted to do that too. I did. I've always just wanted to jump out of a plane. And you're gonna get the I just whisper that you're gonna get to jump out of a plane. Guess guess (laughs) what we did. (laughs) Guess guess what we did. He doesn't know that I know this, but (laughs) we're jumping we're jumping out of a plane. And not only did I jump out of a plane, but I jumped out of a plane in Hawaii. So that was like over the top of me. I so was, that's like I, double whammy. Not only did we go out of the United States, to, even though Hawaii is a part of the United States, you know, you're, yeah. just, you're going overseas. We mm-hmm. then too got to jump out of a plane. Out of plane, jump out of the plane outside of the uh, the main American land. Yeah. So yeah, I think he'd be pretty excited for that. I would. That, that'll, get, be, that'll get I'll him be, through basic training. You'll feel like that'll get him through basic, basic training. training. <laughs> Y'all don't know that I know this. But. <laughs> Y'all they don't know that I know this, but. I get to go to London. When? 2024. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's 2015. And? <laughs> and so what? So what? So, so what? what now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So let's go into, because we talked about all the things that you do. And we know you, you are a man of many talents. Antoine, you just went on this long you know, explanation of how you get your pictures in, how you could have been a photographer and things like that. I think you could do it. But what's something that you can't do that you wish you could do? Um, First, I'm going to say you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Go kids. Yeah. <laughs> For the cheering. That's if you want to do it, put your mind to it. That's his 18-year-old self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but something that I have not had the opportunity to do, I'm probably not going to in my lifetime, but I would love to go out of say out of space and come back safely. Is it the come back safely part? Because you can get yes. to space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and come back safely. We can what? we can get you to space. Now the come back <laughs> safely part is in question. Yeah, I need this to be like a real quick trip. Like 
all right, I, I paid this money to go on this trip without having to donate my heart to mm-hmm. go on this trip out of space, see the outside of the earth, just out of space and come back safely. I, that is, that's like a bucket list thing that I, I really want to do. It's going to be scary, but I want to yeah. do it. Yeah. So that's would you, risk. and you're willing to like go through all the training and stuff that they have to do? Because I think that it's like, I, it's like physical training, mental training, emotional, like you would do I all that. I definitely would. I definitely would. Especially like if I, if I'm at a point in life, maybe like if I'm in like my upper thirties, I don't know. I don't know what's maybe if I'm like in my upper thirties and I'm like, all right, I've done all this stuff. I, I, I'm ready to do something just, just way bigger than anything else that I've done. I would, mm-hmm. I would go through the training to do that. Y'all can that sign would be me the, up. that would be the top of the list. Like you would be that, that guy. Yeah. When you I come could back go to I'll, space and come back and be like, don't I, talk to me. I've seen space. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all. Like at that point, I'm ready to, I'm ready to sit down somewhere and retire. I've seen outside of the earth. Sit me in front of a flat earther and let us talk. <laughs> that's, Cause, that's cause like, let me let me tell let, you. Let me tell you. <laughs> I let I me, really want to. I really want to. What would be? Because they do like different ex, um, expeditions. Like they'll go to the moon or they'll you know Mars or something. Like, do you have an expedition in mind, or it's just like you know what? I just want to go to space. I don't care where y'all take me. I just want to go to space. I don't even think I care to like go to because them places I, it takes a long time to get to those places like the moon and mars and all that type of stuff mm-hmm. so i don't even you ain't even got to take me to none of them places i just want to see the outside of the earth honestly you could just take me into a, a low orbit outside of the earth we'd be like ooh ah ooh okay let's go. let's go let's go back yeah, down yeah, bring <laughs> you back home. And, and i'm gonna be good i don't i don't gotta go step foot on on the, on the moon no nothing you just you just want to go see what's out there i just want to see it i really want to see it What's weird though is uh I think I have uh I think it's called um mega megaphobia or something like that. Like well, when you is, see is something that the where it's like it's so vast, like you're just Yeah. Okay. And I, so I so I think seeing the earth would really scare the shit out of me. But I still wanna do it. <laughs> I see a lot of people talking about that when it comes to the ocean. Would you ever like I'm also a the ocean. I <laughs> 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 But you would rather but but so okay, you're scared of space and you're scared of the ocean, but you would but but if you had to choose, it's space. <laughs> it's space. I don't fool with the water. I don't the beaches as much as I do because I honestly is it because like, of the yeah. videos? Like after like you know how sometimes those videos come on like they we found a new organism, we find a, we found a new fish. Like I ain't fooling with none of that. Y'all found it, cool, keep it down there where it's at. I ain't trying to see I don't I'm not if you catch me on land, I got a chance of being a... If something catch me on land, whatever it is, I don't know, catch me on land, I might have a chance of running away, climbing a tree or something like that. What am I going to do in the water? <laughs> yeah, because of, like, the, the weight and everything. They got you in a three-pound, a 30-pound... I'm going to just give myself through. away. <laughs> oxygen tank. They just bust your oxygen tank. I'm giving myself away. That's it. Like, being in the middle of the ocean is, like... I feel like that's such a scary thing just to see all that water, especially when it be moving. It's just uh-huh. that's a lot going on. It's it's too, it's too much movement out here. Take me back to land. But what makes it safer in space? Because now you're in a spaceship in the middle of space, and you're ain't just no, looking outside, no, and it's black. Ain't no big squid or no shark finna come get me out there. Asteroids. In space. Well, I guess, but <laughs> it ain't. The chances are. I feel like the chances are less likely that I get. You see, you feel like you might run into. A shark faster than a meteor coming and rocking your shit in space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, they they do make like the ocean like big and scary. Like you watch Finding Nemo, and then it's like, look what look what's further. Look what's down here. <laughs> I don't need to see what's further beyond. I don't fool with the ocean at all. My biggest fear of going to the beach used to be getting stung by jellyfish, and I used to be like, I'm not, I'm not going to the beach. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm gonna start a Kickstarter for you. Let's get Antoine in space. <laughs> All right, let's I'm go. Gonna, I'm, let's... A, I'm gonna get with NASA. I'm gonna get with NASA. I'm gonna tell him my friend Antoine. His he wants to go to space. We're gonna get him yeah. to space. It's gonna be I'm like gonna show, one of the. Make I'm gonna a show wish. him this clip. Yeah, make a wish. I'm gonna show him this clip right here about you. He wants to get over his fear of, of, of bad spaces. He wants to go they're, to space. They're gonna make it a whole Netflix series. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be so funny <laughs> all right i do want to switch it up a little bit because 
you know, the Blurred Mob, Hub for All Things Black and Nerdy. We've done the anime, we've done the video games, we talked about the anime, the TV shows, but what we haven't touched on is the music. So one mm-hmm. thing that I do like to say that we have in common, Antoine, is us being big The Weeknd fans. Like, when we like, first met and stuff. I really like The Weeknd, but I hadn't met anybody else who vibed with it as much as, as you mm-hmm. vibing with it. So out of all of his projects, and I know he has that the album coming up, so depending on how that goes, our an- your answer might be a little bit different. But as of today, what are your top three The Weeknd projects? I'm going to go with um, the one that really kind of put me on, House of Balloons. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with After Hours and, uh, okay. I'm going to go with After Hours and I had one more and I'm going to go with Starboy because I, I enjoyed that. Starboy um, was nice. So yeah, it, it was. And the other albums, of course, I don't just like hate those because they do have the songs that I pick from them that I, um, really love. Um, but I would say as a whole, I'll say those are probably the ones that I listen to the most. Don that film is kinda uh I don't know. I like I like Don that film and I liked a lot of songs from Don that film. Um uh, so it's if I had to put anything else up there, I'd say probably that. So you like his more like I'm sad type. Yes. Like yeah. his mellow type music. Yeah. <laughs> cause I cause you saying start putting Starboy on there. Is hmm. I wasn't expecting. I I don't think I was expecting you to say Star Wars. Now House of Balloons, that's fair. I feel like trilogy. Anything out of trilogy goes in the top three. Yeah. yeah. After hours. And, yeah. and I I was kind of trilogy also. I because I, I I be forgetting about that. Um. Hmm. Because trilogy does have stuff from House of Balloons on it, so. Hmm. If I had to, if I had to replace anything, I'd replace House of Blues and replace it with Trilogy, because mm-hmm. I think Trilogy did have the hits that I liked from House of Blues on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so those two could probably be interchangeable. My number one is always like the debut stuff, like when people started yeah. like the Wicked Games area when everybody yeah. was really getting into the weekend. Man, I um, was I was in my room singing because I. I, I I left my girl back home. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm wasn't in no type of relationship or nothing like that, but I'm singing like somebody just left me. Like yeah. I, like, I, was like really I felt the, like I felt him. I, I don't know what that. I what you that. going through, big dog, but I feel <laughs> but that. I feel that imagination Only for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I had all types of imaginary relationships in my head, and I'm singing about. But I think the reason I like that type because I I really enjoy R and B. Um, like I love old school R and B, especially. Um, so the music like that really resonates with me. Okay, so is that why you skipped over Beauty Beyond the Madness because that was like him doing more of his like his pop thing? Like, yeah, is yeah. that like your and- is that your bottom tier then? Like, if 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 those three are your if Trilogy, After Hours, and Star Wars are your top three, then what's what's your bottom? Maybe, maybe, um, I like Dirty Diana from Echoes of Silence, but I don't listen to nothing else from that. Um, because I got to go through these, make sure. And Thursday, um, I don't, I don't think I really listen to any of these for real. So I would have to say that too. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I have to go with those two, probably be in the bottom. Okay. After Hours is interesting. I didn't really like After Hours for real. What is it about so, After Hours? It was it was different. Um, it, and it wasn't a lot of the kind of like the slow slow down type of music uh, that he does. That's really closer to like R and B. Um, mm-hmm. but I did like the pop version of him. It was it was more on the pop side, I guess. Um, like um, what was it? The biggest one. Um, uh, save your tears. Yeah, like save your tears, stuff like that. I, I enjoyed those. I don't know because I and I I went to the concert and I don't know and I think that I already love the songs, but just seeing him perform them in, like, in concert was really just added okay. To me. So you went to the After Hours tour. Mm-hmm. What you did for that? Yeah. 
So okay, yeah, I, it's, it's different than what I usually like, but I, I enjoyed the album, which is I guess it's probably the surprising part. Because that was how much I enjoyed that. Was on that album too, mm-hmm. right? And okay. I enjoyed, so I enjoyed a lot of that from that album. Okay, how do you feel about his? We kind of talked a little bit offline about this, but just to put it on paper, how you feel about his new single, and does that make you excited for the album coming out, or? I, th- I think the way you described it was best is kind of like boy band because when I first listened to that I was like this sounds like something I see them doing on like a Disney Channel show the boy he's starting to sing he playing his guitar or whatever <clears throat> and he's starting to sing or whatever I was like this is giving real Disney Channel type vibes but I listened to it the first time and I was like I'm gonna come back to that I listened to it the second time and I was like I'm gonna come back to it third time fourth time fifth time and I-, I kept listening to it and I was like I think I like the song it's a good song. I'm not yeah. mad at it. It's different than what I. You, it's different. It's not um wicked games definitely, but I'm I like I kind of said before. I'm not mad at his pop music. Um, it's it's good. I, I also think he he's a good singer. He he can really mm-hmm. sing. Um, listening to his live performances and stuff like that. I listened to the live performance of that um single that he just dropped and it was it sounded really good. So okay, I like it. I hope um. I'm excited for the um, album as usual with anything that the weekend drops. I'm hoping that, um, he just comes. I hope, I hope there's going to be at least five songs from the album that I'm going to add to my playlist. If at he least. don't get you, if he doesn't and, have five, if, if, if it's not five songs, would you put that at the bottom then? If he can't, mm-hmm. if he can't give you at least five. We might have to rank it low. <laughs> we might have to, especially because I, I don't know that I, cause I think he was saying like, this is the third, um, project or whatever to whatever he's been doing the after hours Don FM and this is kind of like mm-hmm. the third, yeah. So I'm hoping this this because it's this song with uh, he's mentioning Odyssey a lot. It's been a long adventure or whatever. So I'm hoping he really brings it home for this that he this these this three project series that he's been doing. I really hope he he brings it home with some good music. So I'm excited okay. for it. Yeah, I would say the same. I would say the same. I I would agree. He got to give me at least five. He got to give me mm-hmm. at least five good songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause don't come don't come playing with us. Don't come <laughs> playing because we will let we will let you know. We will be filing <laughs> hey, we'll a direct complaint. Hey, yeah, we will be filing a direct complaint. We know your government name. Don't play with us. <laughs> right, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so moving on a little bit. Um, so one thing I do notice about you, Antoine, is that, you know, you like to go out and hang out with yourself a lot. Like if you just, you know, you'll just wake up and you'll just dip. You don't tell nobody where you're going. You just out here. We find out from Instagram, close friends, what you be out here doing. <laughs> like you you just be, you know, showing yourself the self-love and going and taking yourself on dates. Is there something mm-hmm. like therapeutic or something you find calming? And taking yourself out on these dates or just roaming around by yourself? I do. Um, it's really peaceful to me. I, I I've always enjoyed my own company. Um, and not in like a sense that I don't like being around people, but I I know how to be with just myself and still be happy. You know? It's it's like it's it's just very peaceful to me. Like you could do what you want, when you want, how you want, where you want. You could just you can just do what you want. And I'm grown. I make my own money. I can do what I want right. when I want. I can go outside so, if know, I want to. <laughs> so, and, and I just, like, having that freedom is just, it is therapeutic to me. I will say, um, we mentioned it earlier, um, kind of like how when I went to Hawaii, that was, if I have to rate my um, my trips, I just put Hawaii, it's really up there for me. Like, I, that was a trip that I took on my own. Um, it was the first, like, solo trip, first and only kind of solo trip that I've really taken. And I had a good time. It was, I'm talking about the hiking and peace, like just mm-hmm. dr- driving around the island and just being in my own, my own zone. It was, that was nice to me. I, 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 I really enjoyed that. And I, I just feel like you got to take care of yourself sometimes, you know, get away and do what you want when you want sometimes. What would you say, what would be your advice to people who, you know, are a bit nervous or they are they a bit hesitant or so they get too much in their head about going like, what do I look like going out to a restaurant, sitting out by myself or hanging out by myself? Like, that sounds lonely. Like, what would you say? What would you I, I say, say to convince them to, you know, go out? I would. I don't know. For me, it's like, 
you only get one life. And for me, I, I'm never big on like trying to please other people. Like I'm not, I'm not big on trying to live my life how other people want me to live it. Like I'm only living one time. If I want to do this, I'm going to do it. Why do I care about what these other folks are talking about when they probably not even happen to themselves, you know? So mm-hmm. I think not getting in your head about what others could possibly be saying about you is just the biggest thing. You have to just not care. You have to do it because if this is what you want to do, you do it. You know, I don't care about what people got to say because I'm going to do me. I, mm-hmm. What they gonna do? Fight me because I'm sitting at this restaurant by myself? <laughs> what, they, what they gonna do? Come and beat me up? You here by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the worst that's, that's gonna happen if you take yourself out on a date? I like I go to the. You've done it. You go to the movie theaters um, mm-hmm. alone, and it's it's just like why why should you care about what other people are gonna say? Because you're doing what you want to do. You don't have to be around other people all the time. I think it's it's a good sign for if a person is able to enjoy their own company because you just you have a vibe that you enjoy. So mm-hmm. stop being scared of what other people got to say. Okay. Well, you heard it here, folks. Stop caring about what other people have to say. If you want to go and sit at that restaurant by yourself, you sit at that restaurant by yourself you and you restaurant. order your food and you drink your drink and you enjoy yeah. yourself. You order you a three-course meal. Don't worry about the size of your back. And you drink your drink. You'll drink a drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You heard it here, folks. Straight from S1. No big back shaming over here. You do what you want. No big back shaming. You get a three-course meal if you want to. Yeah. And you go home proud. And you go home proud. <laughs> do it. Army strong. <laughs> cuts to commercial cuts to commercial <laughs> so my next question for you Antoine is that um, what is also being big Avatar fans and I always find it funny that when it comes down to like choosing what nation we want to be in it, oh, when it always gets to you it's always a conundrum because you always pick Earth Nation and then we get into this big argument of like no you seem like you more Air, Air Nation Antoine and sometimes it's because you know of your sign and sometimes it's because of your qualities but you you heavy on now I'm, I'm about to be Earth Kingdom so I want to no. know what characteristics do you feel like we're missing out on your peers are overlooking where we could be like oh okay Antoine we could see you being in the in the Earth Nation <laughs> I don't know uh <laughs> I would say that I probably 100% most definitely belong in the Air Nation. I belong as an airbender. I I see it when y'all say it. I do see it and I agree. So I don't even know if I have a specific characteristic that I give you. I would say the only reason I always pick, (laughs) it's probably two reasons that I always pick Earth Kingdom is first because I just, I just like the ability, like manipulating the earth. I just like their ability. Mm -hmm. I I think if I had to choose one, I just, I just want to, to do that. Other than that, I mean, it's green too. I mean, that's kind of my favorite color. It's green, it's green. So. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it might be cool to like float through the air, like you know, airbender and ooh, all that type of stuff. That might be cool, but I wanna, I wanna throw a rock. <laughs> you just feel like air's not enough. Just making tornadoes and everything that everything that you've seen them do with air is not enough. You got to be able to chuck a boulder. I want to chuck a boulder. So that's yeah. what we're missing. We're missing your desire to chuck a boulder. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to start throwing some more rocks and stuff. That's sometimes, gonna really put some, it in head. sometimes you just need to throw a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah, don't feel I'm like just... you can do that with airbending? You don't feel like you can conjure up enough air to shoot a rock? I mean, I guess I've seen Aang do it. So, yeah, you could probably... Or do you need yeah. to feel the earth? Are you the type I wanna of... I want to feel the earth. I want to feel hawk. me oh. chucking this rock. <laughs> Like this is yeah. a big ass rock. I need y'all. I need to feel that I'm throwing this big ass rock. Yeah, I want to stomp the ground and the rocks come up and all that, and I'm poo poo. <laughs> I just, I just like, the, I just like the ability. That is the only reason. I mean, well, it's only out of the two. That's like the main reason. So, who like would you say? Who would you say is the best Earthbender in the Avatar series? I'm always go with Toph for that. She's blind and she out here whooping folks. So. Well, if, um, I'm always stick with Toph. I'm always yeah. stick with Toph. Toph, yeah. Toph is the goat. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So basically, we're not missing anything. We're exactly correct. 
<laughs> you just gonna throw some rocks. <laughs> that's what I got out of this. That's what I got out of this. We're not missing anything. You just wanna throw some mm. rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you you just wanna go against the grain. That's that Gemini nature in you. You just wanna go against the grain. You know exactly you 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 right. <laughs> but I wanna throw some rocks. <laughs> yeah, but I wanna throw a rock. Let me let me throw a rock. Why I can't throw a rock? Let me let me shake up the table right quick. I already know what y'all finna say. And no, I'm, I will not be whipping the air. Yeah, before anybody got this, before anybody talk, let me just let it be known. I want to be. I'm, I'm throwing some rocks. Okay. So we're getting close to the end of our interview, Antoine. I want to ask you. I got two more questions for you. The second and last question is: What impact? do you want to leave on the world as a member of the Blurred My Podcast? Um, I would say, uh, I, I believe I've probably harped on this before. It's kind of just be who you are. Um, I know we've talked about this a lot in the podcast, um, kind of like how being the nerd, I guess you call it, being the guy or guy, girl that watches um, anime, plays the video games and stuff like that, you might not, receive the best rep or whatever because you got this nerd you're the nerd i guess um but you can like like we were just saying you can be what you want you can watch what you want you can do what you want i mean like we're all people we like what we like and nobody can really take that from you Mm -hmm. um so be who be who you are like what you want like what you like watch what you want to watch if you enjoy anime enjoy anime i feel it so even though people may look at you and be like, oh, yeah, he might be a big sports head, basketball, football. And then you turn around, it's like, no, I sit in the house and play Zelda. Yeah, I um, actually like when I'm like doing army stuff or whatever um, and I'll pull out a video game and they be like, we forget that you are nerd sometimes. And I'll be like, yeah, because right. <laughs> when, cause when um, I don't remember if it was Breath of the Wild or Tears of the King- Kingdom came out, I'm talking about after every meeting because. You was I, on that I'm, game. Always, I'm in meetings. I'm out. I, I'm pulling out that switch, and mm-hmm. they be like, "Yeah, you're you're a nerd." And I like, I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> just because I this is me. just because I run fast, real. And, <laughs> <laughs> just because I might run fast or some and do good on my PT test, don't mean I'm not a nerd, you know." So basically, you you want to leave people with the thought that you can beat the stereotypes. Like you don't have to be what everybody just because of you know how you look and how you carry yourself you can beat the stereotypes yeah. and like what you like and be proud of what you like as be well what you like. yes just because everybody else around you playing football don't mean you gotta play football don't mean you, you gotta you play go football. Watch your, you go watch your demon slayer you go mm-hmm. and play that game you write your code you watch your demon slayer and you you do you if that's what makes you happy that's what makes you happy that's what's up i like that message so now for my last question, Antoine, is that not a timer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hold on, because I didn't know I had to keep pressing this until I got to thirty. <laughs> All right, Antoine, you have thirty seconds to convince me to watch One Piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got thirty seconds to convince me. I mean, like you got to convince me. Like I want to go watch. <laughs> The first episode, like it, you gotta make me get off this recording and go watch the uh first episode. You ready? Okay. Tell, yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. Imagine not taking the short way in life all the time. Imagine not taking that shortcut to watch this anime that's gonna get you what you want because it has like ten episodes, two seasons, or whatever. So it's gonna get to the point, whatever. Imagine taking the long way in life and. And really enjoying the adventure. Imagine your Sailor Moon, how much you're in love with Sailor Moon. You probably didn't realize you was going to fall in love with Sailor Moon, but you took that adventure, you took that journey, and you fell in love with it. Imagine starting the first episode of uh, One Piece and being like, I don't know about this, but as soon as you like get into it, you're like, oh, I actually might love this show. <laughs> hey, I will say, I will say, I will say, appealing to the Sailor Moon piece, you almost had me. <laughs> you almost had me. He said, I, I know what I'll get a Sailor Moon. <laughs> you almost had me. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. 
We got to work on your speech. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna go door to door and telling people about One Piece, <laughs> you know what? I might start the first episode. <laughs> I might start the first episode. Start the first episode. Did you convince I gotta, I gotta, me fully though? No. That's okay. I just gotta <laughs> yeah. I gotta I gotta get that pitch down like before. If we're gonna go door to door, I gotta get it all out before they slam the door in my face. Yeah, we're gonna put you in a one piece shirt, get you a Luffy hat, and um, we are gonna sing you up and down the street. Yeah, you got thirty seconds. Yeah, you got thirty seconds to convince everybody to watch One Piece. Everybody Somebody on gonna, the block. Yeah, everybody on the block. Do you have some time to talk about One Piece? We gonna get we gonna call Ryan, have him ship you one of his um. Uh, one Piece manga, and you just gonna go around and be like, hey, do you have some time to talk about One Piece? <laughs> and not with the manga book, like it's a Bible, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Do you have some time to I'm talk about book. I'm the book do, you like long, do you long for adventure? <laughs> do you hate taking the short way up? <laughs> Well, do I have an do I have an anime for you? <laughs> like, what's anime, baby? Ooh. So, how do you feel about how do you feel about the reboot with them talking about they're going to be you know cutting out the fluff, the episode count for certain arcs are going to be shorter. Like, do you feel like that I, ruins your pitch about the adventure? I I enjoyed the adventure. I right, so um. Hmm. I don't know if it ruins, I don't think it ruins the pitch because I enjoyed the adventure. Like even like, I even watched the fillers. Like when I, I, if I'm that into a show that I'm watching the fillers that I'm re- I'm really into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still would say that the adventure is nice. Um, once you fall in love with the show, you kind of just, you just, you're along for the ride. You're like, wherever they taking me, wherever they taking this little pirate ship, I'm along for the ride. Um, I do think it's a smart idea that they're doing that though, because, the the series is definitely long winded. I, I think it's as it's again like, where we are now. They've made it worse. I think in the beginning it wasn't as bad. Um, yeah, in the beginning it was it wasn't as bad. And like now, like with this Wano art that has lasted like it was done now, but this last art that they just did that lasted like I think like four years. That's insane. Mm. It's 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 crazy. I think in the beginning for me, like especially because. I was starting from the beginning, so all the episodes, a lot of hella episodes are already out, so I could just watch, watch, watch. So I didn't really mind any of that. I'm just I'm just going along. I'm watching the show. Like, I got hella episodes to watch, so I, I wasn't even complaining about it for real. It wasn't until I had to wait week by week. So, and that's when it really hit me how long how long-winded it was. I was like, damn, why are we still why are we still doing this? <laughs> damn, Y'all still here? I, Y'all still here? What are we doing? I think in the beginning, like, because I could watch the episodes when I wanted, how I wanted. Um, I I don't think it was as bad. I don't think uh, the pace was as bad, but I also just think just because I could watch it um, back to back that it that it was it was better. But cutting out a, a lot of the fluff, I think the Wano arc is going to be the major one that they're going to cut out a lot of fluff in. And um, I think it'll make the arc a lot better because that's it's a nice arc. It's just they did way too much. Mm-hmm. They did too much. Like we just beat this person twenty episodes ago. Why is he back? Why right. why, why, why are we fighting this person for the fifth time? It's time to move on. It's time. But so. at the end of the day, the adventure. The adventure, y'all. Go on the for adventure, the, y'all. The adventure. Do it for the adventure. Do, Do it, it for the, the adventure. <laughs> but that's all I got for you, Antoine. That was all of my questions. This has been a great time interviewing you. It's a good time. Seeing this how has been did. fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. Mm. Um, but yeah. So that's everything that you need to know about Antoine. If you have any additional questions, you can leave them in the comments. If Antoine, you know, wants to answer them, he'll answer them. I'm gonna make him answer them. <laughs> if you need a, if you need another thirty second One Piece uh pitch, let me know. I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna go practice in the mirror. Yeah, like how they be having them speech uh practices, like going in the mirror and just you know mm-hmm. boom boom. Yeah, mm-hmm. every morning you need to wake up and do a thirty second one piece <laughs> pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but with all that being said, we're gonna go ahead and shut this down. So 
Once again, thank you, Antoine, for joining me on another episode of the Blurred Mile Podcast. Thanks for giving me the chance to interview you. Um, for everybody who was watching and listening, make sure you follow us on our social media platform so you can see what else Antoine is up to, as well as everyone else on the Blurred Mob. We're on Instagram at the Blurred Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at the Blurred Mob. And you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blurred Mob Podcast. Make sure you check out those links in the description for different ways to support the mob. Um, all donations we get goes towards equipment, software, and everything we do to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. You know what's funny though? If I got to sit out with Ed Boom, what I would tell Ed Boom is to hold off on the games for a second. Because what Ed Boom and the rest of them don't don't realize is that if done right, they have a gold mine when it comes to MK and making movies into.